Week three of end zone coming at you. Our game of the week, Calhoun City. The Wildcats looked dominant last week, trying to keep the mojo rolling on the road at Aberdeen. How about the Starkville Yellow Jackets? A young athletic team who's looked impressive this year, hosting Meridian and also Louisville, the back-to-back 4A champs, playing host to Columbus. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokoloff and Grace Ibarra is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota, Fastnet, powered by Four County, Scruggs Farm Lawn and Garden in Tupelo, nothing runs like a deer, and Clark Beverage Group. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors and thank you for tuning in to week three of End Zone. John Sokoloff and Grace Ibarra hanging out with you on this Friday night. It's a little after 11 o'clock and to quote, to quote <laughs> Scott Van Pelt, I'm not tired yet. I know you're not either. We had a bunch of great games this evening, but I mean, our game of the week. Unlike Calhoun Scott City, Van Aberdeen. Pelt, we won't have bad beats though. No, no bad beats, no bad beats, but still, man. I mean. It's a good game. A good game, a lot of close games this evening, but Calhoun City Aberdeen, you know, a team in, in Calhoun City who really looking to Take the next step from winning 11 games last year to being a true 2A contender. Not that they weren't last season, but trying to fix what went wrong last year and get over the hump. And on the other side, an Aberdeen team that uh, had a one-win season last year and, and trying to turn the page. But you saw MD Jennings' team last week, and they were impressive. Man, they were dominant. They're a team that's extremely disciplined, and MD teams are always very disciplined. They are always good at defense, first of all, and then they run up the score like no other. When they get that ball, the time of possession, I would love if we kept actual stats to see what the time of possession is in these Calhoun City games because I'm certain they have the ball for 70% of the game. Well, let's see if they were able to replicate uh, that success that you were talking about, and let's get out to our Game of the Week highlights. WCBI's High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. This 2024 Toyota Tacoma got me there safely. I bet you looked so cool in that. I, I did, you know. I, I wasn't sure if, you know, the pickup trucks are my vibe, but after driving that one, it definitely was. Maybe you'll have a car trade in your too. car. Maybe, maybe I will. Uh, that's about two of my cars, that one. But uh, <laughs> Aberdeen hosting Calhoun City. First drive for the Wildcats. Look Hayden at that Buchanan. Defense. Yeah, the Bulldogs starting off on a good note on defense on that first drive. But now... The Wildcats defense showing up early as well. Third and long, Shane Farmer, oh. the linebacker, coming up with the big interception. That. Yeah, he did. And you know what? When you make a big play like that, you get a lot of momentum. Demarius Pittman runs it in from 19 yards out. They got a lot of Pittmans on the team. But look at that. Points right at the camera. He knows what's up. Made us feel special, no doubt. I'm sure you were so excited. I was. But you felt famous. The Aberdeen. Offense didn't do uh, a whole lot. many exciting things after that on getting sacked on that play. And then Pittman, another one, getting to cash in here. This time it's Xavier, finds the end zone. 14-0 Calhoun City. Wildcats end up winning it 38-8. Let's get out to Starkville for some homecoming. They're hosting Meridian. First quarter handoff is two. A Braylon Jenkins and Jaden Johnson oh, just lays him out. That'll wake you up, huh? Loss of two yards, but same drive. Third and 11. Jalen Ruffin looks deep, and he's got Devarius Harrison over the middle. Great camera work, too. 59 yards, thank you. Just easy jog into the end zone. 7 0, Starkville. Jackets back. With, oh, excuse me. We have to shout out Andrea's daughter, Emily, first. Yep. She was doing her thing. She was doing her thing. Jackets back with the ball after a muff punt. He takes a shot at the end zone. He's got Arabian Moore gladly. Comes down with it for six. They take a 14 0 lead. Jackets win it 28 15 over Meridian. Some scores for you. Tupelo taking care of business. We don't know exactly how the Golden Wave got there when it comes to roads, whether, you know, they We took, were contemplating which highway they took. And they, they definitely took 22 to get over there, and, and maybe a, there was a little bit of 55 in there, perhaps, but uh, what I will say is the something Golden that's not up for debate. Yeah, something not up for debate is that they dominated, and they won it 35 to 6. Grenada, I don't know why my voice cracked there. Okay. Uh, I'm, I actually I'm equally, didn't notice it until you said it. I'm equally as excited for them as I am every other team. But yes. uh, the Chargers, the battle of the Chargers, I should say. Grenada winning it 41-22 after beating 
uh, Winona as well. A couple of nice wins for Michael Fair and company. All right, we got some Saltillo and Nettleton action here. A couple teams that are 0-2. Someone has got a win tonight. Saltillo Tigers on offense. Robertson, the ball carrier, stopped, though, by Nettleton. Cheerleaders liking what they see. And now, I mean, Roland and Beasley gets his man for a 25-yard touchdown. He ran way more than that, though, across the field. He did. He did. I mean, the field's 53 yards, I believe, from end to end. So, nice big touchdown there. And Saltillo ends up winning it 51 nothing. All right, a couple of other scores. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to this columbus Louisville game. There may be some technical difficulties on that end, but uh, Louisville won it 50 to 13. And then Itawamba beat Lafayette 40 to nothing. All right, how about we get out to West Point and Knox City County. West Point looking for that first win still, Grace. You know, they've had a gauntlet of a schedule thus far. I'm not, I'm not going to give them a hard time about it because when you have to start your season with Louisville and with Starkville, going 0-2 is not a terrible thing. No, it's not. And we just saw Sean Crawford with a nice little run there. Then Kamario Taylor finding his brother, J.D. and Taylor, for a 10-yard gain. And then Knoxville County quarterback, Kamario Taylor, to his brother again, this time for a nice 10-yard touchdown. That's awesome. Yeah. Doesn't nice get connection. better than that. Yeah, he had a really also, you know, thread the needle on that play. Okay, onside kick here. Recovered by Noxaby. Three phases of the game, Grace. Offense, defense, and special teams. Getting done in all of them. The Tigers getting something cooking here. And now Kamario Taylor, we know he's dangerous with his legs. Runs in for the touchdown, a five-yard score. Do you have him in fantasy? <laughs> I That's should. That's huge. He throws for a lot of touchdowns. He runs for a lot of touchdowns. But West Point ended up getting its first win of the year, winning it 20-18. to 18. All right, coming up next here on End Zone, the Amory Panthers playing host to Caledonia. Also Hamilton and Boonville. A couple of offenses who like to score a lot of points. We'll see how they fared against each other tonight. And East Webster, after a big win last week, looking to do it all over again on the road. It's all next. Welcome back to End Zone, Amory and Caledonia. Emmanuel Randall. We are talking about if we had him in fantasy. Grace and I uh, uh, both did not. What did you say earlier that he was uh, taking a little higher than yeah, when you were drafted? Yeah, running backs are going really high in drafts yeah. lately. Look, so. there's not that many good ones. I know. When you, you got a guy take, like him. you got to take the good ones. Of course. Take them early. Trayson Crump intercepts the pass from Caledonia freshman Tyler Long. And then Hayden Jordan trying to come up with a big defensive play here on Braden Moranto, and he does a big-time sack for the Cavaliers. But all reliable, Emmanuel Randall. Man, this is Yet why again. I wanted him. Look at that. Anything right into the camera, him. too. He knows. Yeah. 49-0. And look at that Amory light show. Wins. Must feel good to get a win at home on that new field. Oh, yeah. That field looks great. Can't wait to get up there for a game. Now let's get out to Moorville. They're hosting South Pontotoc. Wyatt McDaniel drops back to pass, and it is picked off. South Pontotoc taking it the other way. Jimmy Young trying to figure it out. He's fired up, man. Wyatt McDaniel back with the ball, drops back. He's looking around, uh, doesn't see anything. He said, I'll just take it myself. 15 yards into the end zone. Easy money. Moorville. Ends up getting it done 17-14. They eke it out. Look at that, man. A couple other 3A games. Uh, Choctaw County beat Ripley 29-3 at home. Corinth beat North Pontotoc 33-10. Houston topped Northside. I believe it was 37-18. Um, regardless, the regardless, Hilltoppers. Regardless, big win for the Toppers. All right, Hamilton hosting Boonville. I down 21 to get out to Hamilton. in the second. You know I was. Lions trying to get something going. Justin Verner, the deep pass to Ian Nichols. No one in the stadium made a sound until he got up with the ball and realized that he caught it. So now, down two possessions, trying to get something going late in the second quarter. Verner passes oh my tipped, goodness. and it's picked. LaPaul Boykin. If you think he was just going down, you don't know LaPaul Boykin. Arm. Big stiff arm. Is he going to get in? Oh, Can no. you make it into the end zone? No. no. From the 10 to the 10, man. But I'm heartbroken. I am too, and I, I bet he, his heart was beating fast after that. Oh my goodness. So Porter Tapp, great fake. He even got me, and then he finds Braxton Orender on the other side of the field. He finds the end zone, 28-6. to six. Devils, they end up winning this one. 
31 to 14. That might be one of my favorite end zone plays. Ever. <laughs> yep, and look, it's going to be in the top five, I can tell you. Let's get out to East Webster. They're playing Noxipater early on, third down. Jacavius Riddle gets the handoff, picks up a nice run for a first down. Later on, Logan Sanhorn gets the snap. He's in trouble, sacked by Dagan Crowley and a host of East Webster defenders. You notice how I pronounce his name correctly? You did, you did. Not Crowley. Crowley, not Crowley. <laughs> Cooper Stidham finds Crowley across the middle for the slant pass, breaks a tackle, has a big gain down inside the Tigers' five-yard line, sets him up real nice, first and goal. D. Bingham gets the ball, gets into the end zone, three-yard score. East Webster goes up 7-0, and they win big, 54 nothing. It is Ron Price's 100th win. Wow. Big congrats big to him. Congrats to him. Congrats to Patrick Gazelle. All yes. those uh, we East love Webster. We do, we do. Great man. All right, Mantachi beating Hatley 13 to 8. Winona, nice win at the buzzer almost. Beating Kosciuszko. Buzzer beater, 24 if you will. to 20. Also, Moreville beat South Pontiac on a last second field goal to win. I'm it. sorry, I should have mentioned to 14. that. Yeah. No, it's all right. I know that was, right. that was John's favorite part of the we, night, I think. It was, it was up there. All right, coming up next, you like points. You're going to want to tune into these Bruce East Union highlights. Oklahoma battling Eupora too. A couple of maroon teams going at it. And Starkville Academy at Bayou Academy. It's all next. Welcome back into end zone. Let's get out to East Union Urchins hosting the Bruce Trojans. First quarter. Drew Holloman keeps it, breaks it open. He's gone. Did you bet the over? The way, yeah. I, Did you I, have Bruce I, Holloman any uh, anytime touchdown? I actually had him first touchdown score. So wow. It's six nothing urchins. Okay. And they're they're gonna line up for the extra point. You know, nothing crazy. And uh, then the holder Heath Wilkinson fakes and runs it in two points. So it's eight nothing. Later, urchins back with the ball. Drew Holloman tosses to Daniel Whitfield, and he is wide open, easy touchdown. Urchins are just cooking, 15-0 East Union. But the Trojans offense, they're gonna get going. Joshua Long tosses it to Jermaine Jackson. Man. He scampers down the sideline for a touchdown. I think every highlight in this had to be like minimum 50 yards or something, I, I'm not At sure. At least two top play nominees. <laughs> Insane. It was 50-7 to seven. East Union ends up getting the win, but man, 77 combined points. Look at that. Insane. You had the 76 and a half over. I sure did. All right, Okolono, Eupora. A lot of maroon on that field, I'll say that. Peyton Perkins, nice 10 yard run here to keep those chains moving. Perkins again, but this time, just like that cutback, no one was catching him. 25 yard touchdown, such explosive speed. And now Okolona's Jaden Heron fumbles but recovers it. And then another fumble here. Is it Ipora good defense or it. sloppy offense? Well, you can make the argument for both until Porque you're blue in the face. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for the Spanish. I, yeah. I always uh You've never always seen that Taco Bell commercial? No, I have not. Oh, it's, I have it's not. a good commercial. You know I'm, I'm jealous. I'm sure our viewers know what I'm talking about. You know I'm jealous of the people that are bilingual. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, and Eupora you're jealous of Eupora because they won. Yes, there you go. Great segue there. Thank you. All right, more <laughs> scores. Nanawoya Stringer, 16 to 14. Not sure if 50 to 27 was Scorigami, but I can tell you that uh, this was not. 16 that to 14. That was a very basic score. Definitely not Scorigami. All right, Baldwin, Water Valley. 27 to 7. That's also a pretty basic score. Yeah, it is. A lot of clean scores tonight. And Baldwin's right. staying undefeated. How about we got TCPS and Harding? How about it? Late in the second quarter, Eagles up 13 0, but the Lions driving in the pass. Picked off by Nathan Cornelison, and the drive is stopped. It's a nice view from up on the truck. Yeah. It's an ideal place to watch a game. You know, sometimes people complain about uh, sitting upstairs, but for there, I, I would take it. But here's another interception by the visitors, Ashby Brown in the end zone. And then the Eagles, a little later on, had a third and long Jeb Brown to Finney. Not quite enough for the first down, but hey, doesn't matter. You know why? Because TCPS won it 19 to 13. First win of the season. Look at that. Congrats Big one Eagles. for the Eagles. Big time. All right, more scores. Biggersville over West Lowndes. 
You know what Drake said? What did Drake There's say? There's no much love when you go OT. Was that it? Did I mess that up? I think that's right. But I also don't want to endorse you if you're wrong. No love when you go to OT, whatever. That's the, whatever. the version of it. Well, <laughs> Biggersville won. All right, in overtime. Vardaman beaten French Camp 41-0. And Belmont topping Myrtle 38-14. Oh, no. I think it's never much love when we go OT. Never much love when we go OT. Yeah, there you sitting go. sitting here that thinking it. about it. I'll look right. it up. Well, uh, while you look that up and we get more hip hop references for you, because I know that's why you tuned in, we're going to have some Academy and West Alabama highlights when we come back. Welcome back into End Zone, some MAIS action. Starkle Academy hosting Bayou Academy. Colts led 16-7 at the half. Third and 14 for the Colts, and Barrett Peaster misses the tackle, but the balls forced him out of bounds, short of the sticks, so Wait, they what? take the over. Wait, what? The Colts? Like, your Colts? Uh, no, these are not my Colts. My Colts okay. play Sunday. All right. um, Luke McKenzie gets the snap, takes off. He gets the first down. My Colts are at Green Bay, actually. Oh. Um, drive stalls, volunteers, trying a fake punt here. It does not work. Oof. Turnover on downs. This one ended up being pretty close in the end, but Bayou Academy, not my Colts, uh, get the win. I don't endorse these Colts. 23-21. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when people in their Twitter bios say retweets do not, yeah. you know, uh, do not express my opinions or beliefs. That that was you at the end. And yeah. it, I, you know they what? won. I didn't endorse. I them. like Starkville Academy. I can't do that to them. And they had a huge win last week over uh, Carroll Academy, who lost to Winston Academy tonight, 28-14. But Starkville Academy had that massive comeback win. Just couldn't pull it off tonight. Well, the Patriots falling at Carroll Academy, as we just mentioned. How about Winona Christian topping Indianola Academy 47? It's a mouthful. John has been struggling to say Indianola. I, I did struggle. Tonight, I got it at 11. At 10, I was struggling a bit. Look at all the vowels there, folks. I mean, we got five vowels. Oh That's goodness. a ton. It looks It's like a wordle dream. If, you yeah. know, the words were nine, nine letters. I mean, all those vowels in there, you'd be looking pretty good, probably. When I was Christian, didn't even care. No, they, they didn't. They sent them home packing. Nope, nope. They saw them, uh, sent them some shooting stars. How about that? WCB. Washington beating Oak Hill Academy 35-6. to Heritage Academy. This is Scorigami, I'm going to say it. I'm, what a I'm turnaround this team has done Big from last time. season. Well, you know, Tobias Smith, he took over. When he did, they had a really, really young team. And now, you know, those guys have grown and they've learned and, and he's a really good coach and, and they've done well these uh, Patriots past couple weeks. Out. They beat Biggersville, they beat Winston Academy, they beat Pillow tonight. They're rolling, man. Good for them. Good for them with uh, Tobias Smith. Happy for them and their family. There you go. That's right. All right, let's get out to some West Alabama action, baby. Aliceville at Sipsy. I mean, so this is 2A Aliceville playing a 5A Sipsy Valley team. That's one of those, you know, we're going to iron sharpens iron, hopefully, beginning of the season. Yep. Just, hey, let's play these bigger teams and, and see how we can do it here. Well, here's an interception to Isaac Gonzalez thrown by the Jackets. Not quite what you want there. And then Sipsy, LJ Cormia, bobbles oh. a snap, makes a play a for the end zone. This is the most insane throw. He, like, off his back foot, which you shouldn't do. And then it looks like the player that was in front of him was going to get it. It that goes like off his fingers. That was like a basketball pass, the way he jumped. Just absolutely nuts. I they have were, a lot of questions. They were up 42-0 at the half. I don't believe we had a final, but uh, I would imagine. It was oh, 55-13. Okay, there we go. 55-13. It was very what? Jumpman-esque yes. in that throw. It was. Like it was the impressive. Jordan logo. All right. Green County beat Sullivan 28-6. Gordo had one more point than Sullivan, but still. First loss of the season. Tough. You know uh, Gus Wave. Smith and Co. though. I do, I know. bounce back. One of the most winning programs, the winningest programs in Alabama. They are. They're usually, they uh, know you about know, winning. usually playing meaningful football late in oh, the year yes. as well. Uh, I think this might be the lowest scoring game we've ever had. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't County. know how to fact check you on that, but I'm just going to go with it. Just remember, Michael Williams coming to this year for a 1A school had 14 seniors graduate. I've never heard of Damn. anything like that. That's tough. It, it really is. All right, Marion County beating South Lamar 24 to 14, and Vincent beating Lamar County 37 nothing. So before we get into tonight a little bit more, we have our uh, Fastnet Speed Play of the Night. There's only one choice. There is only <laughs> one choice, and that was out in Hamilton. The Hamilton-Boonville game, the Boonville defensive tackle, LaPaul Boykin, Tipped the pass at the line of scrimmage, 
got it back, ran 90 yards from the 10 to the 10, WTI. was tackled. Well, I guess that's 80 yards. I can't do math. 80 yards. I didn't even correct you. That's so embarrassing. From the 10 to the 10. <laughs> this might be the only time a defensive tackle wins the speed play award, but he's got it. All right, well, he's our fast, fast net speed play and of the night. And he's John's new favorite player, probably. He, he is. I mean, they are a top five nominee, no doubt. By Four County, fast, affordable internet service from the people you know. There we go. Got it in there. Uh, <laughs> top five play, I, I will say a guarantee. That was awesome. Grace, we had a lot of uh, good ones tonight. Aberdeen and Calhoun City, the Wildcats looking even stronger than ever. We had uh, West Point getting their first win over a great Knoxby team. Your game in Starkville. What stuck out the most to you tonight, you think? I think West Point getting its first win. On paper, it looks odd. West Point 0-2 to start the season. But when you look at their schedule, they start against Louisville. They start against Starkville. Those are games that you put on your schedule because iron sharpens iron. You want to win those games, but you're not upset if you walk out of those with a loss on your schedule. So it was really cool to see them finally get a win and get it over a team that has been in that 3A state championship for multiple years in a row. Yeah, you're not upset because, one, I mean, obviously, you know, it's early. But, two, those losses really don't impact you that much. I mean, it's no, not it's like they're district No, it's not district games. play. It's not in 5A. No. You're doing it literally just to play the best of the best. And when you have that transition, head coach, obviously, you know, coming from within the program already, it's, you know, there are things that change. But to see them still compete the way they've done week in and week out and then finally get this first win in week three, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and they have a brand new head coach, so we'll see how they how they do. But, you know, in 5A, obviously a little weaker now with the addition of uh, the 7A classification. So now they're, uh, they've really got a chance to continue to um, – Ascend like they did, <laughs> even even uh, when when Chris Chambliss was there. But uh, that's all we got for you on End Zone. We'll see you next week. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokoloff and Grace Ibarra is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota, Fastnet, powered by Four County, Scruggs Farm Lawn and Garden in Tupelo. Nothing runs like a deer, and Clark Beverage Group.